We will have a quick view about the relevant market and the application in general. Then we dive deeper into the how-to or best practice. Of course, the effects and corresponding color codes will have a big role today, but also the regulatory choices are getting more and more important. Further, I will point out a few things which can bring trouble with it and the solution or how to avoid it. Finally, I will give a shout to available print samples, which might bring the one or the other design idea with it and close with a summary and outlook. The main application of offset metallic inks are for wet glue labels, folding, carton boxes and publications. Offset has compared to other printing technologies some advantages such as the high flexibility with its fast printing plate changes. The price advantage of conventional offset plates compared to the other printing forms makes this printing method cost effective and very interesting for small editions. The quality of offset printing speaks for itself. We could mention here a lot other smaller segments, for example, in the packaging industry. Please be invited to add in the comments section what you also see as relevant markets for metallic offset applications. I'm pretty sure you all know how offset printing works. But to understand the influence on metallic effects, I will briefly give a basic overview about the technology here. Starting from the end, the blanket is transferring the ink onto the substrate. The ink comes from the plate cylinder, on where the hydrophobic ink was separated from the non-printing area by the hydrophilic found solution. The found solution covers, the, covers first the hydrophilic parts of the plate before the offset ink is applied by multiple rollers on the ink-loving parts. The many ink rollers which are transporting the ink from the ink duct will have a relevant part for later pages. For now, we only need to mention that they are homogeneously spreading the pasty ink over the roller surface. The high viscous ink system is brutally spread over the many ink rollers to ensure the density on the printing plate and later the substrate is consistent. This leads to some interesting restrictions when it comes to metallic pigments. Also, the resulting ink film thickness is very low at around 1 to 1.5 micrometer. We recommend particle sizes of around 2 to 4.5 micrometer for gold ones and 4 to 7 micrometer in aluminium pigments. As the aluminium is more flexible than gold bronze, the particles can be bigger. Two big particles would be destroyed by the shear force between the ink rollers. The characteristics of offset are leading to a very accurate and detailed printing image. It has still the most detailed print quality, whilst other application technologies are catching up over the last years. The tower coater unit is a sprout of the flexographic application. Here we see the standard offset ink unit on the right side, whilst the tower coater is shown on the left side. With the growing demand for overlacquering, this device first started. Later it was more and more used for printing spot lacquers, but also metallic effects. The flexor unit on the offset press can be used either for a protective overlacquering or to add spot lacquers in a printed design. The function is pretty similar to a standard flexor unit, just adapted to the very accurate imaging register of the offset press. The analog roller can be varied from a very fine lineature and corresponding low ink volume to very high ink volume 
when using cylinders with wider cell structure. This results in a bigger ink film thickness compared to offset of between double and four times more. Also the ink viscosity is much lower. These factors allow bigger effect pigments, either metallic pigments, maybe also up to very coarse synthetic mica or glass flake pigments. The image registering is supported by metal strengthened printing plates. Depending on the machine setup, either water-based flexor or tower coater inks can be used together with an infrared dryer or UV flexor tower coater inks together with an UV or LED UV curing system. Our next topic is about Eckert's best practice for metallic offset inks. One of the most important factors in determining the amount of ink used in offset printing is the print density. To determine the density of metallic inks, polarizing filters are used. When measuring silver inks, a blue filter is used. When measuring gold inks, a yellow filter is used. Depending on the product used, leafing or non-leafing, different target density values are required. Here on the right side are some density values for illustration. When using leafing silver, these are in the range of 1 to 1.1, while for a non-leafing silver, the density values are around 0.6. Even with, gold, even with gold shades, as seen here, the density values of non-leafing inks are lower than those of leafing inks. For each finished offset ink, Eckert provides a technical product information, including the target density. All metal star inks can be used with most commercially available fountain solutions. The pH value should be kept as neutral as possible to avoid drying problems and tarnishing during print run. Perfect would be a pH level between 5 to 5.5. Avoid high pH levels as this might influence printability in a negative way. Alcohol in damping units can be beneficial to metallic inks, up to a maximum of 10%. Metal star inks print perfect with a wider range of alcohol-free fountain solutions. For best printing results, please contact your press chemical supplier. The conductivity of the dampening solution has no direct influence on the print results. There is no print technically favorable range above or below which there are printing problems. Nevertheless, we, re we recommend not exceeding a conductivity of 1500 micro, micro Siemens. This recommendation is based on the correlation between conductivity and salt concentration. A higher salt concentration can cause corrosion on the press. Before using inks on the press, it is recommended to observe the following points. Select the right metallic ink for the job. Are the ink properties the right one? Is there an inline UV varnishing or other critical combinations which are demanding a specialty ink for achieving the technical needs? And rotate the stock of metallic ink so that the oldest material is used first. This ensures that the ink with the specified properties is the freshest available. Check metallic inks after opening to ensure a homogeneous mixture. This is necessary with metallic pigmented inks, especially when stored for longer periods of time, of time than the guaranteed shelf life period. Metallic pigments have a much higher density than organic pigments, therefore some settling is expected. Blending of metallic inks with other materials 
requires careful attention. In general, metal star and top star rings are press ready products formulated to give optimum performance. However, if a product modification is necessary to meet the needs of a special application or to obtain special shades, such as the Pantone metallic colors, the use of additives, inks, toners or varnishes are to be tested for compatibility and performance in the blend. In order to minimize the possible side effects, such as tarnishing or change of rheological properties, it is recommended to do such modifications press side or only hours before use. Longer storage is feasible once shelf life stability is tested successfully. The right printing and plate design could be highly beneficial for the optimum metallic effect and press performance. Small printing areas or half tones may require an additional solid bar outside the printing image to ensure a minimum amount of ink flow and take up. This helps to avoid emulsification problems or tarnishing effects through roller shear forces. The interaction of fountain solution and metallic inks are essential for successful printing. Metallic inks are designed to work well with both alcohol mixture and alcohol-free fountain solutions. Nevertheless, it is recommended to use products with a pH 5 to 5.5. Lower pH products might affect the metallic pigment resulting in tarnishing or change of the rheological properties. Fountain solution with high contents of electrolyte or complex formers also can affect the metallic brilliance, could cause plate sensitizing or affect the drying speed of oxidative drying inks. Proper fountain solution filtra filtration systems are recommended for improved press performance as well as ensuring consistent pH and conductivity values. Water settings should be run as low as possible just enough water to avoid scumming. When the print job is finished, any metallic ink from the fountain, from the ink fountain should be discarded and not used again, since both metallic effect and shelf life stability can greatly be reduced after being in the ink fountain. Placement of ink on a particular printing unit might be helpful to increase the press performance. If possible, it is recommended to run metallic inks on the last ink unit. This prevents potential interaction with subsequent units that might result in ghosting images and plate counter etching. The avoidance of excessive heat is a necessity for the successful printing of sheet fit offset inks. In some areas, it is common to practice to use uh, infrared lamps in order to speed up drying or to enhance, uh, enhance sorry, the metallic brilliance. Heat could cause solubilization and penetration of the varnish system, resulting in severe chalking problems of the pigment staying left over on top of the surface of the substrate. Monitoring of color density is a key factor to ensure consistent print quality. The use of the right densitometer type is critical for accurate measurements. Eckert is strongly suggesting the use of reflection densitometers using a 0 0.45 degree measurement geometry and polarizing filter. The polarizing filter extinguishes the portion of light that is reflected from the printed metallic surface, which would indicate an incorrect density reading. What always has significant influence on the printing result is the used substrate. In this example, we can see the different optical appearance when printing on uncoated and coated paper. Although the printing setup is except the different paper all the same, 
we have a completely different printing result. No matter if you print gold as shown here on the left or silver as shown here on the right. The metallic effect will increase by using smooth calendered glossy substrate. Here the pigments can orientate well on the smooth surface which leads to a good metallic effect. The opposite is seen on the rough and highly absorbent substrate where the pigments have no chance to lay down smooth and build a surface for oriented light reflection. The metallic effect is therefore weak. Now we have talked a lot about the technical properties. Let's see what the common language is when speaking about metallic effects. The very classic metallic coats are describing the gold color. The color variation of gold can be described between rich gold, which is a very greenish gold shade, and pale gold, which is very reddish. The middle between greenish and reddish gold is simply called rich pale gold. Other typical gold shades are left out here. We are not, we are not using real gold for many obvious reasons. Aside the price it would simply be too soft for surviving the print process as a pigment particle. The false gold is made from brass, which is a copper zinc alloy. The brass was historically called bronze. This is the source of the old named gold bronze, which is still used today. Also the silver shade is self-explanatory and the pigments are made from pure aluminum. The company Pantone set up a classic color codification, which is still very common. The metallic shades are described between Pantone 871C and Pantone 877C. These are very close to the gold names described on one page earlier, but adding in between steps to the gold shades. The newer Pantone codes are called Pantone Premium Plus. These effects are no longer based on classic metallic inks, but instead made from non-leaving aluminum pigments, partially tinted with transparent organic colors. The non-leaving silver is called 10077C. The polychromatic colors in this watchbook are ranging from 10078 to 10399C. The yellow and orange tinted shades can get very close to, to the original gold shades. One exception is a dark flop from gold bronze pigments. This cannot be matched by a tinted aluminum. So what is the difference between non-leafing and leafing aluminium inks. One advantage we just described on the page before. Non-leafing inks can be easily tinted to polychromatic color shades. This can be seen on the right side of the screen. The two very right pictures are showing a leafing aluminium ink tinted with blue. The aluminum pigments are blocking the view onto the blue pigments. Therefore, such tinted effects are usually very metallic, but nowhere near too colorful. The blue pictures are clearly based on the non-leafing version. Aside of the perfect tintability, I want to mention the perfect overprintability. Even inline UV varnishing is possible with this ink. In the pure silver shade, the leafing version still has an advantage over the non-leafing version, especially when not over varnished. We have spoken a lot about effect pigments and their effect. Here we can see the different pigment categories for offsettings. The pictures shown here are created with our in-house 
Scanning Electron Microscope, or SEM. The pigments are too small to be seen in detail by using a standard light microscope. With the SEM, you can notice big differences between these grades. The left side picture is called cornflake pigment due to obvious reasons. The pigments are looking like breakfast cornflakes. This pigment glass is the simplest aluminum pigment. There are a lot of edges which can scatter the light, which can reduce the brilliance of the final application. The coverage though is already good within this pigment glass. The second one shows our silver dollar grade. Again, the name speaks for itself when compared to the shape of the pigments. These pigments have much less edges and the surface of the pigment is smoother. The printed results which su with such pigments is therefore brighter and more brilliant at a comparable coverage. The metallo pigment glass is produced in a very different kind of way. This is not a milled pigment. The process here is by physic physical vapor deposition, which is used in its short form for the name PVD pigment. The other common name is VMP, which stands for vacuum metallized pigment. There are almost no visible edges. This pigment glass can provide the most brilliant results. The gold bronze pigments are looking quite a lot like the cornflake pigments. The SEM picture doesn't provide colors, so here it is also in black and white photography. The brass alloy is much denser than aluminum, which provides excellent opacity. Switching from microscopic view to the macroscopic angle, the aluminum effect pigments show their difference in this optical comparison. The Topstar brand name carries the VMP or PVD pigment glass and combines the highest gloss with the best opacity. The print in the middle is based on non-leafing silver dollar pigments. This is a combination of a very whitish and brilliant effect, but reduced opacity. The most common pigment glass in offset is the leafing cornflake here on the right hand side. This is usually a very good cost effective compromise. I think as the picture is not the best one, I made it with my mobile phone, but the gloss level can speak for itself where you see Topstar has the 85 gloss level and it goes down to a 60 with the metal star leafing pigment glass. Further zooming out, we can see here the dominant standard silver effect on the very left portals. The VMP or PVD glass shines in the picture in the middle. Very common, especially on beer bottles, is the use of golden effects. Here by gold bronze pigments on the very right hand side. Before anyone is asking where are the mirror-like effects, I want to categorize our today's shown effects. The conventional offset application with its, with its specific physical properties is limiting the overall effect to a high gloss silver. The high solid, high viscous ink formulation limits the pigment orientation too much to allow mirror-like effects even with the best pigment class. If you need something more brilliant, I can only point out to the tower coater effects. Due to the low viscosity, the pigments can provide much better effects, closer to mirror-like effects. If one is looking for a brilliant matte board replacement, I would recommend looking for the tower coater versions. These prints shown here are real prints, which can be ordered via our website. Some examples are showing the basic metallic effects. Here, metal star gold and silver. The middle one is the high tier offset ink called Top Star. 
and the most brilliant Flexo Ink via Tower Coater application is the UV curing Ultra Star here on the right picture. Our next topic is about the regulatory aspects of metallic offset inks. ECAT products are meeting regulatory requirements such, such as, for example, mineral oil free formulation, Swiss Nestle listing, or dedicated low migration inks that are made under GMP production with especially selected raw materials. We also have the right product with dedicated country listings, especially for your region. As you see, ECAT offers the right solution for many regulatory requirements. Please contact us if you have a special regulatory request. We are here to help you find the right product for your needs. To give an example, shown here the new regulation when bringing inks to France or getting inks out of France. There will be new laws in 2023 and 2025 that limits the maximum level of mineral oil in all printing inks. The saturated hydrocarbons are limited to a maximum level of 1% in 2023 and 0.1% in 2025 in the ink formulation. The, ar the aromatic hydrocarbons are limited to a maximum level of 0.1% in 2023 and one part per billion in 2025 in the ink formulation. This will have a significant impact on conventional offset inks as the use of oil-based solvents will be almost impossible. Eckhart has already a solution by offering mineral oil-free offset inks such as the Metal Star Eco Super Eco 10 series. For use in an indirect food contact, Eckhart has gone, step, Eckhart has gone one step further and formulated speci spe specially offset inks sorry, for the so-called FPG inks. This stands for food packaging grade. Formulated under GMP production with specially selected raw materials. These low migration inks are sold under the brand name FPG for food packaging grade. It's special to produce these FPG inks, Eckhart has developed a closed production process without aliphatic and aromatic solvents. We work with new milling lubricants in this area. The production process itself is completely closed, with specially trained personnel and the highest env environmental and safety standards. The production plant is separated from all other areas to avoid cross-contamination. And here you can see a few examples of our offset inks. Eckhart already uses bio-based raw materials in the formulation of its offset inks. The Metal Star FPG, ser FPG 712 series contains 75% bio-based raw materials. But also the inks not declared as FPG, such as our Metal Star Echo Gold with 50% and the Super Echo Silver with 70%, already have a high proportion of such bio-based raw materials in the formulation. Metallic inks are sometimes seen as difficult to use. While it is correct that they are different in their behavior to standard CMYK inks, we can definitely say they can be used easily when certain things are watched. The following slides and recommendations can also be downloaded in PDF form 
on our website. There are more tips and tricks included than I will show today. The color strength or hiding power is crucial to gain a nice metallic effect. With a too low setting for the metallic ink, it uh, has poor opacity. Usually, we recommend to adjust slowly to a setting of 1.5 for gold inks in the yellow channel of the density meter. The standard silvers should be aimed for 1.0 in the science scale. The silvers are kind of bluish, therefore this color choice. Non-leafing silvers are more whitish, therefore the cyan channel does not see it very strong. With this in mind, we recommend to aim for around 0.6 to 0.7. A poor metallic effect can have several reasons. In this example, it comes from a non-suitable substrate. The substrate is too absorbent and rough to allow a good pigment orientation. A change of substrate would help, or if this is not possible, a primer can cover up the rough surface. If low effect came from a low ink density, adjust slowly to more open ink zone where needed. If the print run started with a good effect, but very quickly it turned into a poor one, the reason can also be an over emulsification of the ink. Reduction of the found level to a low setting is recommended as long as the plate runs clean. In this combination also the overfeed of ink should be avoided. Please keep in mind that metallic inks usually react slower than CMYK inks to the ink zone settings. When using leafing oriented metallic effect pigment inks, the pigment sits on top of the ink film and can partially be rubbed off. To prevent this, an overprint varnish is recommended. If there is still bad rub resistance, there might be other reasons. Maybe the substrate is too absorbent and most of the binder system was absorbed before it had the chance to dry. If this is the case, a different substrate or a primer will be again the solution. Sometimes we receive print samples or pictures of partially corroded gold bronze ink in the final product. There is usually an inhomogeneous optical effect. In this case, here, a darker area surrounded by a brighter area. Why is this the case when all was printed with the same gold bronze offset ink? When we take a look onto the reverse side of this page, we notice a solid black picture. Also, the substrate is highly porous and rough nature paper. On rough and absorbent substrate, usually the ink settings are needing higher throughput of ink to compensate for all the absorption. Further, the nature paper reacts with water from the found solution acidic, which can attack the brass from our metallic ink. This leads to the darker tarnished effect in this area. Again, a change of substrate or applying a primer will prevent from getting aggressive media in contact with the gold bronze pigment. As mentioned before, we have print samples available which are showing our effect possibilities, not only in offset, but also the offset and tower coater combinations. Further, some of these print samples are also carrying overprint varnishes with glass flake pigments like shown on the very first page of our presentation today. You can order them by clicking on the link when we shared the presentation with you.
Another helpful tool is our offset fan deck, which combines some effects of conventional offset and UV curing offset effects. You can also look for other fan decks in different printing applications if this is interesting as well. The next seminar will be held in autumn. The topic is then about UV metallic. Within the next days, you will receive a copy of this presentation. And there will be our contact details, or mine and Alex, which did not take part today, but you can ask him as well. Uh, if you would like to know more about our topics from today, for example, as just mentioned, in case you need help to pick the right products, please contact us. Please note the licensing rights of the pictures and the content of this presentation. And please visit our website. So thank you for joining our seminar and staying with me until the end. I will now check if we have unanswered questions and please feel free to ask more questions now via the chat function.